morning. We'll give it a few more minutes for folks to come on in. Dims, I hope that you are ready to be ambushed this morning to introduce yourself. I mean, all things in time, but yes. I'm here, Amy. <laughs> Excellent. That was also a mic check, so perfect. Hello. Good morning. How are you? All is well. Um, I've already let Dims know that he's going to be ambushed and we've done a very short mic check. It's very exciting. Sorry, he's going to be ambushed. Of, like, Dims, this is your first official meeting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, good fun. <laughs> Dims looks ready. <laughs> How are we doing on people? We're reckoning about 19, so let's give it a few more minutes. Let's do that. We've got quite a few regrets this morning, so I am not certain if we're going to hit quorum. On the other hand, there's nothing on the agenda that actually needs a vote. So six of one F does the other. Fair enough. Uh, Easter holidays are kind of uh, continuing on for some folks. Makes sense. I hope everyone who had a long weekend had an enjoyable long weekend. And Liz, I have also added your item for any other items of business to the end of these slides, so. Okay, cool, thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah, I think I see apologies from two folks, Justin and Saad, so. Uh, and um, Sheng, I think, sent to me privately as well. So, ah, oh, okay, yeah. right. It's like the hang on, count how, how many people to count in here. So, yes, good fun. <laughs> All right, should we, um, should we get rolling? Yeah, let's do it. Good. All right, so welcome everyone. Usual rules apply, usual meeting logistics, and uh, we have. Uh, a new member of the TOC, Dims. I'm sure everyone knows who you are, but why not say hello? Take an opportunity to say hello. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my nickname is Dims, so you can call me Dims. Uh, please hit me up on Slack, CNCF, or the Kubernetes one. Uh, happy to chat with you to get to know how uh, I can be of assistance. Uh, thanks a lot to Michelle. Uh, big shoes to fill. Uh, hopefully, I'll. Um, be able to learn um, and help. So, and thanks to the TOC for voting me in. So <laughs> it's a big thumbs up for me. So thanks a lot. I work for VMware. I live just south of Boston. Um, well, two, two personal things. <laughs> uh, great to have you on board, Dims. And uh, right, let's get started. So today is mostly about SIG updates. Looks like app delivery, I guess they're crossed out yes, because they're not giving is not presenting today, um, but we've got all of the rest of them coming on in, so. Okay, so um, contributor strategy. Shall we start with you? Yep, um, <clears throat> it's been real quick. The uh, we're almost done with the contributor site. We're working out some technical details um, for the new contributor site uh, going up. As soon as there's a result, you'll see it go live. I'll send an email to the list. Um, Carolyn's been leading that. Uh, for governance working group, uh, whose meeting is uh, uh, in two hours today, um, we're going to draft of. Uh, advice to projects on having a charter statement or charter document. Um, uh, this is spearheaded by Dawn, who 
thinks we might eventually want to make it a requirement for graduated projects. Um, a charter statement being something that says, this is what the project is, this is what the project scope is, um, uh, because it can be a little bit confusing if you're coming across a project for the first time and it does not have that information. Um, and a surprising number of CNCF projects don't. Um, uh, for contributor growth, um, whose uh, meetings this afternoon, um, for documentation and progress, uh, we've got the recruiting playbook. We're almost done with the contributor ladder template. Um, I, even though we haven't officially published it yet, a couple of projects have, have used our draft. Um, the contributor ladder, again, is the one that says, you know, you do these things and you're a contributor, you do these things and you're a reviewer, um, you do these things and you're eligible to become a maintainer. Um, the, um, it goes hand in hand with uh, some forms of governance. Um, and then finally, for maintainer circle, um, at the request of some of the maintainers, we are moving to a cycle where once a month we will have a regular ContribX meeting and once a month, um, well, once every four weeks, um, it will be maintainer circle section. So the maintainer circle sessions will be scheduled out for the rest of the year, um, which was a request that maintainers had so that they could attend. Um, and, um, and that's been this last month. Wonderful, thank you. I'm, I'm wondering whether um, you're getting feedback from the projects for, I mean, you know, the things like the contributor ladder and the recruiting handbook sound amazing, sound like really useful resources. And I'd love to know whether that's landing with the projects. Um, it's landing with specific projects, like um, the recruiting handbook started out because it started out honestly with the Linkerd folks coming to contributor strategy and looking for help um, I, recruiting contributors and getting a lot of interactive help and deciding to write down everything they did um, and what did and did not work. Um, so, um, a lot of this has been that we have a certain skeleton of things that are like, these are things that, that we knew from the beginning that we needed. And then there's this other set of things like the recruiting handbook that came out of a project came to us and they needed this. Um, uh, the, um, and then sometimes those things overlap with the topic of the month for maintainer circle, and then we get a lot more feedback on them from that. Great. I'm also seeing uh, Paris talking about how it would be helpful to get more outreach to maintainers. Um, I'm actually thinking, well, we have some mailing lists, right? So yeah. I don't know how responsive people are on those. Not terribly. I mean, as you might imagine, project maintainers tend to be super busy and get a ton of email. Um, so uh, in a lot of cases, you know, stuff gets read selectively, just, just like it does for, for you know, TOC members for that matter, because, you know, sure. we'll get a ton of email. So the, um, yeah, um, the, um, so wait, where are the comments there? And and I'll, uh, Paris is making a note about like they're reserved mostly for KubeCon activities. We really try to be able to cut down the amount of emails that we send out to the maintainer groups because there are things that are like, I really need to respond by this deadline. And if it starts getting missed because there's a whole mm -hmm. bunch of things in there, it's it's no fun. So yeah. um, and I'm happy to be able to hear ideas on how to be able to reach maintainers better. Well, part of it is we want to get the contributor side up because I feel once the contributor side is up and all of this information has a published location that is not just this document inside a GitHub repo. Um, that will probably get more eyeballs and thus more feedback on it, particularly from newly selected projects, um, who are, after all, the ones who need our help the most. Yeah, and I also, I think, I, I completely see the point of uh, waiting until we have things live before we start trying to point too many people at them. But I also think that on a 
considered basis, an occasional basis, if we've got really useful information, we should use those mailing lists. You know, we don't, it's not going to be spamming them if we've got like, here is some really cool resources that we think you might find useful. So um, uh, let's, let's try and find a happy medium for using those mailing lists where we've got great info to send them. Wonderful. Anything else? Any questions for contributor strategy? Uh, okay, let's, oh, thank you for, that's the um, contributor site link, is it, Josh? Yeah, there's a branch for the new version of the site. Um, and okay. then it also pulls, it also pulls documents out of the contributor strategy um, repo, but you can see okay. Yep. All right, so it sounds like uh, now is a good time for people to take a look at all those resources and give you feedback before before we push the button on them going live. It, it'll be a work in progress. Um, Nothing is ever finished. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you very much, Josh. Uh, SIG Network, who do we have today? Hey, all. Hey. Um, it's, uh, it's Lee here. Um, the, so I've, I've long been very excited about um, contributor strategy, but I have yet to uh, uh, offer up meaningful feedback. Um, now might be, I'm trying to hold myself publicly accountable. Now might be an advantageous time. There's a couple of, um, well, there's, there's a couple of smaller or, or burgeoning projects that are um, mostly being advanced through the CNCF um, Service Mesh Working Group, which is a working group within SIG Network. A couple of these projects, um, the last time we met this past week, there were um, maintainer nominations, and um, which is a reflectance upon governance for those projects and sort of the contributor ladder for those projects. Um, neither of which are, I don't think, are necessarily explicitly stated. And so the, the two projects that I'm referring to, one of them is um, Service Mesh Performance. The other one is Get Nighthawk. And um, both of these are potential, I don't, know if, I don't know if this is potential guinea pigs for um, you know, what's been laid out by contributor strategy. So I'll, I'll um, offer that up. Uh, so speaking of yep. the, yeah. Oh, nice. Good. Uh, I've unleashed Paris. So I'm oh, good. Uh, within the, so there's the, so the service mesh working group within SIG network um, has um, a few different um, cross project initiatives. Um, we've spoken of these in the past. This is where mo much of our time um, during the biweekly meetings is spent, is spent sort of advancing these three initiatives, um, one on service mesh conformance, um, which um, helps SMI move forward in um, as a specification, as, as one that, that can you can measure the conformance of each individual surface mesh with. Um, there will be there'll be some of that um, shown, I think, inside the SMI's virtual booth at KubeCon. Um, the service mesh performance um, has seen an uptick um, from. Uh, some kind of folks at, at Intel who've been um, bringing their knowledge to bear on the on both the spec and some of their their prior work in the space. Um, if I recall, that they'll be speaking on some of that at Service Mesh Con. Um, get Get Nighthawk helps advance and get Envoy into the hands of of others. Um, Envoy's, um, or rather, Nighthawk is. Um, uh, it's almost as interesting as Envoy, which means that since, um, which means that I expect um, people will want to get more Nighthawk if they I think if they understood the power of it. So, anyway, um, uh, yeah. Uh, the so if Li Zhang is on, I think there there's an outstanding item um, in uh, collaboration with uh, Open Application uh, Model Ohm and how it is that service mesh patterns. The effort that has been going on inside the working group. Um, to define what those patterns are, um, are being uh, realized in implementation uh, leveraging Ohm and Meshery. 
um, meshery and service mesh performance, uh, both uh, proposed for Sandbox during this last review. Um, so hopefully they'll be up for review next month. Along with project reviews, um, one of the projects within um, SIG Network, KGB, was just reviewed this, this last, last week and, and accepted into Sandbox. Um, it, if you haven't seen KGB, I just, you know, briefly, um, I might suggest that you do. Its scope is fairly focused and its, its use cases are, I would say, you know, pr pretty helpful. Um, fill an unmet kind of uh, unmet niche, niche specific in, in a Kubernetes native way. It's not that that need hasn't been met in many other ways, but um, the Kubernetes native way here is, is pretty nice for KGB. Um, near is, please anyone correct me if this is off, but, but I, I think um, Emissary Ingress or the, the project you know, formerly known as Ambassador, uh, I think it's still out for review um, for incubation proposal but I, I could be behind on my mailing list. Linkerd uh, proposed for graduation here about three weeks ago-ish. And so its review is, um, should be done this week. Um, but from the SIG's perspective and then uh, available, you know, a, a, SIG, you know, a report to the, the, to the TOC to carry forth with uh, further review. Um, and then, yeah, and the SIG has a, a deep dive scheduled at, at KubeCon. Um, I think the, the last item here to maybe highlight is uh, there's been, we've, I've spoken of this a couple of times, really there's probably a need for assistance here. And that is with respect to a, a service mesh usage survey, um, maybe ideally done in coordination with um, the end user group and the radars that go on. There's been, some people have expressed frustration about the the depth of that that survey on on this topic, and uh, and so as the radar comes around, it might be a good time to offer up assistance from the SIG and and um, help collaborate to make sure that uh, it's a you know detailed survey to offer up um, uh, domain expertise from the SIG. Is that the end end user radar? Yeah, and that's just about. a yep, and that is not uh, that's just a suggest. Yes, it is. And it's just a suggestion that the SIG could assist with the some domain expertise, kind of level of depth of the the questions asked. Or so I think. Yeah, I think that would be a really good idea. Cheryl Hung is the uh, person to speak to about that. I think. And I think it's also up to the end users to determine which radars they choose to do, you know, what, whatever they choose to do next. But I agree, if they were to do a service mesh radar, that would certainly make for extremely interesting <laughs> uh, reading. Yeah, it might save us all some time on Twitter, actually. <laughs> uh, um, Josh is asking about service mesh performance. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, yep, it's all right. I'll speak to it verbally. It's um, it's a specification. Um, so I, I would think of it in a similar, you know, a spec in a similar way as to SMI being a set of specs, as CNI being a set of specs. SMP itself is, um, <clears throat> it's a, it defines a standard way of um, characterizing um characterizing the resources in a given environment. So in, in you know, one Kubernetes or cluster or multiple Kubernetes clusters with different size nodes and different, res different resources available um, with uh, a given service mesh deployed under a given configuration. And there's a lot to configure within a given, you know, across the meshes. Uh, and to be able to describe um, the application that's deployed as well and the type of performance test to be run, so the configuration of that test, sort of its setup and framework, to be able to define that in a common um, format, such that um, a few things are facilitated. Um, one is 
Uh, one is for the individuals that are or the, the projects or the individual end users that are using that format to be able to have conversations um, between themselves in, in to facilitate those in an easier way to compare across uh, across deployments, to be able to compare to themselves historically. So to, to have a common format for describing what those environments are. You can imagine it actually takes kind of a deep breath to articulate you know, like all of how that's working. Um, and it then that specification then also facilitates um, potentially creating new a new yardstick uh, by which sort of a new metric by which um, uh, performance is spoken to, um, and so that might be something simple like a uh, like like a mesh mark. Um, so so if the performance of a given environment is running at a mesh mark of eighty five. Great, that, that can be articulated in two seconds, uh, you know, with all of that, that spec detail behind it. Um, and so service meshes like console have um, been early proponents of this type of a specification so that they can speak, um, you know, f um, fairly or f I think both fairly and accurately to customers who are adopting that mesh and to be able to say, to be able to empower them to to sort of speak in this common format to say that here's here here's here are answers to your questions about the overhead of a mesh the the underhead if if you will like the what you're gleaning from it what it's giving to you in context of how, you know how much that costs you maybe also in context of what you're able to give up so if you're able to give up you know tracing somewhere else or logging somewhere else that um, so it, it ends up um, just it, it, unto its own as a spec. You know, somewhat. I think specs are somewhat boring, actually. But but what it facilitates um, it, um, can be really helpful to, to end users, to, to projects. To yeah, the at at some point we're going to need to come up with a way to address our various spec projects because specs have slightly different needs from code projects. Um, and I know a couple of the spec projects we already have have been. Um, struggling with getting the kind of awareness that they actually need, um, which is different from a piece of code that you download and run, um, but not in this meeting. Yeah. I... Yeah, we, we do have precedent for spec projects in things like yeah. TUF, for example. So um, yeah, yeah. I, I think the interesting thing here is that it's kind of more the output from a working group. Yeah. Um, so it's not officially a project, I, I would say, which, you know, that kind of, yeah, you know, that's just, that's just nomenclature. It's not really, um, you know, but uh, if we, if we want to turn it into a spec project, we should turn it into a project. Um, so uh, Lee, I had a question on uh, the conformance work. Is this supposed to be something that would be run by end users, just like they run Kubernetes conformance, or is it uh, something just to qualify uh, as like a helping test suite, uh, or is it like end user oriented? Which which one is it, or is it both? Yeah, it ends up being both. Um, I think that <clears throat> to your point that immediately it probably finds that the individual projects that there's about there's either seven or or eight of them that have. Um, and I don't mean to use this, don't, don't interpret any connotation when I use the term um, claimed, but there's you know, seven or eight projects that have claimed to be SMI con conformant. And, and um, I think that there's probably the, the initial immediate value is with those projects and their ability to be aware of where they're at with respect to the spec and, and the spec with respect to its customers, if you will, or its implementations. Um, but then forthgoing, I would, my, the hope there is that, um, end users that um, invest into that integrate with SMI or end users or other tools not so, so their service meshes themselves but other tooling that integrates with SMI to benefit from its ubiquity you know it's um, that yeah there's there's sort of those three entities if you will the end users that want to verify that as they go to upgrade from one version of their chosen mesh to the next where they're using SMI to integrate with yeah, the reason for asking that question is um, CNCF runs a formal program for conformance of Kubernetes where people upload their results and then somebody gives them a thumbs up 
uh, somebody from CNCF gives them a thumbs up and say, uh, yes, you can do this uh, and it looks good. So if you have to set up a formal program of that sort, then there is more work to be done on the CNCF side um, to, to set up and run that program. That's why I was asking. Oh, sure. Nice. Yeah, I did, that's very much desired by the SMI project itself. There's been, uh, as a prelude to that, there's been some um, some work with the tooling that basically the, this is something of a Sona boy for SMI. There's been work done um, with the tooling to help verify, guarantee provenance of the results and integrity of them as they're sent in, but but very much so to, to, to what you were saying, like the, the, I will, for my part, I'll follow up with you to get plugged in in the right way that that project plugged in. All right, anything else, any other questions for SIG Network and for Lee? Okay, who's up next? Observability. Yes, um, and also just to reinforce the one uh, that one point from uh, SIG Network just now, um, there is tremendous user interest in having specification for both transport and for for everything which is testing of of implementations, uh, speed, compliance, everything. We we are seeing this in in Prometheus left and right. There is there is substantial interest from from end users. So I think it would make sense to to pursue this. Oh, sorry for the noise. So um, things we were able to close um, with the help of TOC. Thank you again. Um, the due diligence for open telemetry incubation status uh, has been closed last week. Uh, we didn't manage to get through the whole document, but uh, we managed to just closing the door. Um, Alina and Cornelia pulled uh, the rest or the remaining parts of the document to themselves uh, with the SIG obviously supporting where, uh, wherever they need support. Um, so yeah, um, that is basically the um, the 2021 work package uh, or the major blocker for SIG observability done. So we are now focusing on the other stuff. Um, there is a document on how to do cloud native observability, which has already seen, uh, I think, easily a dozen different companies and, and people uh, giving input on, on how that, um, on how to do a proper uh, observability 101 down in depth, like from the beginning to the real uh, implementation and what to be aware of. Um, the other thing is a white paper on how to do tracing from the end user perspective, which is currently in the works. Um, on janitorial level, uh, we are looking for additional chairs and tech leads, and we'll be coordinating this with the TOC liaisons. And that's it from my side already. And do you have some candidates now for additional chairs and tech leads? I do have a few candidates and I managed to talk to one or two of them, um, but not everyone yet. Uh, as agreed with you, Liz, uh, I want to talk to Cornelia and I forgot the name um, to go through this. Uh, you, I think your other liaison is Harry. Yes, that's probably, yeah, okay. Great. So um, if anyone else, it, so I think there are a few potential candidates that kind of between us, some of us have identified for that might be suitable for SIG observability. If anyone knows of anyone else who um, the SIG should potentially be talking to for those roles, you know, now is a good time to, uh, to put their names forward, maybe uh, talk to Richie about that. But yes, we'd like to fill those seats. Pretty promptly, I think. Okay, uh, SIG runtime. Cool, lots and lots of uh, runtime projects there. Who do we have? Hey, um, it's Ricardo. Um, hope everyone is doing okay. So yeah, so we have uh, a few projects that we have reached out and also presented in our uh, meetings. So in the containers and runtime space, we had SSVM, which is a WebAssembly runtime uh, that's complete. Uh, they've also decided to uh, 
uh, apply for sandbox and I think they applied, but they they might get accepted in the next uh, uh, sandbox review meeting. So I think that there were some questions for them to get accepted. Uh, in another uh, initiative uh, or project, uh, rootless containers presented. Uh, this is an um, uh, initiative uh, led by Akihiro from NTT. Uh, they presented in our last meeting. Uh, so this is a way for uh, users to take advantage of uh, uh, user namespaces in containers and having the ability for something like Docker to run as a uh, root uh, uh, emulated root user. So on the host, uh, you're not running as uh, as a root user. You're running as a different user. And in in Docker thinks thinks it's root, and then you can instantiate containers uh, yeah, using that, and and so that it provides uh, a different level of isolation. So interesting project. Uh, so we'll see a lot more progress there. Uh, uh, there's another project, Quark. It's uh, another container runtime. They are presenting on April fifteenth. Uh, the difference with some of the container runtimes is that this is written in Rust. Uh, so we'll see how that compares to some of the other runtimes. Um, um, so some progress there and uh, using Rust. Another project that we reached out to is uh, in Native. Uh, this is a um, project that um, allows you to uh, create binaries, uh, small binaries from WebAssembly modules so you can run them uh, at the edge. And so they're presenting on uh, April 15th. Uh, so it, interesting way of using WebAssembly and it might be useful for edge type of workloads. They said that they're using this for um, right now to uh, run binaries for Xbox at the edge. So, uh, uh, so we'll find out more from the presentation. And another uh, uh, runtime that we reached out to is Fizzy. This is uh, written in C++ and WASME, uh, which is a WebAssembly interpreter. Um, cool, so, so that's for uh, container runtimes uh, in, 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 in the MLOps, Edge, uh, AI, IoT space, a uh, couple of projects that we reached out for machine learning. One of them is TFX. Uh, this is from Tensor, the TensorFlow community. Uh, and they're presenting on June 17th. So they're still a couple of months out, but uh, they're interested in presenting. The, they said they'll go live around that time. And another project similar to TFX is MLflow. Uh, and this is backed by the folks from Databricks. They're, they also express interest in presenting. So hopefully we'll have them soon. And a couple of other projects related to edge computing. So one of them is Super Edge, uh, we reached out and K0S. So, so another Kubernetes distribution similar to K3S. So we'll see how that's different. Uh, hopefully they'll be presenting too. And secret time activities uh, for specific to the six. So we have a KubeCon present, a EU presentation. So there will be some work group updates from the container orchestrator uh, device work group. And then we also have engaged uh, some of the liaisons to, so they can help out with some more engagement. So uh, Dimps and, and Ricardo and Alina are, are helping out. In this is a repeat from the from the last uh, 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 update, but uh, there are upcoming events. So uh, you know we have the KubeCon EU session, and there are some other events that are related to the SIG. That I mean they're not directly related to the SIG, but you know there there's some relationship there with the uh, Cloud Native Wasm Day. There's uh, Cloud Native Rust Day and Kubernetes AI day and Kubernetes uh, on edge day. So that's it for the updates um, and happy to take any questions if you have any. Uh, Ricardo, um, the 
Container Orchestrated Device Working Group. The issue is still open in the SIG runtime um, repository. Is it, is it actually working? Where do people sign up? Is there public information on how to engage with this working group? Um, is, it, is it already yeah. on? Yeah, it is. It is active. Uh, so uh, I think the issue I need to follow up with the, the chair, which is um, Renaud uh, Gover and uh, about that issue. So but then if you if there's something that is not um, clear, yeah, just we can chat offline and we can actually, you know, uh, yeah, I just got curious yeah. uh, uh, to figure out like how how and where they are doing their work. So and I couldn't find it. Yeah, I yeah, ended up yeah. looking at this issue. Okay, thanks, Ricardo. Mm -hmm. No problem. Are, are there any questions? So cloud native wasn't they? Uh, okay, so I'm scrolling through the notes here. Okay, SSVM is renaming. Okay, oh trademark concerns. Yeah, uh, and. Cloud native was awesome day is a day. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, if only we all had time to, well, if, if we could all clone ourselves, we could all go to all the day zero events. There's a lot going on, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of tracks going on on days one to however many as well. So, yeah. <sighs> When's the cloning project? That's what I want to know. All right. Uh, thank you, Ricardo. Six Security, I think, is up next. Hello, hey, it's Brandon. Um, so quick update for six security. Um, couple couple things that are coming up and you know some asks um, for the sick. Uh, we had the retrospective survey from the security white paper that's now out. Um, so we're getting feedback from you know what, what the people think about the white paper, what do you want to see more, uh, what are some topics that, that we should cover. Um, so um, we are sending this out right now, and you know it would be nice if everyone can take the survey and as well as you know, share this around. That would be awesome. Uh, we have the Cloud Native Security Lexicon. This was um, stemmed from the discussion from a previous TOC meeting on uh, some of the security terms, uh, for example, key management and um, and Cloud Native. Uh, in CNCF. So this project is going to start up. It's going to be kind of like a, a glossary of the different uh, terms in, in security for cloud native. Um, so it's a reference that people can point back to. Um, so th this is one of the next efforts that are going to be um, moving forward. So we have a team of about uh, eight contributors now. So it's, a, it's pretty, uh, people are pretty excited about this. Um, and the last big update on the projects that we have now is we have the software supply chain paper. Um, so this is to add a bit of context. Um, this is really looking at securing the supply chain as well as uh, creating a secure software factory in which we can build the artifacts. Uh, so the white paper has uh, reached kind of near the final drafts. Um, and so we're going to send out a community review of that. So um, keep an eye out for the email. Uh, we will probably be sharing that and the SIG um, mailing list. Um, so also a, a special update we have is uh, we, we got given an award uh, for most effective DevSecOps team of 2020 from the DevSecCon. Uh, so that's... Um, uh, around the, the award is for the work that we've done with um, the white paper, the work that we've done with the, the, the different efforts um, all together in SIG security. Um, and, and the kind of last update, which is, isn't really on this slide, but we, we have a new project board, which I'm going to link into um, the chat. Um, this is something that we've um, started in terms of helping us um, govern kind of projects that are going on and to provide a, a better view for new members into what are the projects that are currently going on in SIG security and how to get involved. Um, so yeah, that is the end of my quick update. Uh, any questions?
not a question, but congratulations on the award. It's very awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I guess it's six storage up next. Um, so following on from the previous two um, tech lead nominations, um, which were which were voted through. So thank you again, TOC, for that. Um, we are um, we are doing a bit of a, a reshuffle on the co-chairs, um, as Aaron um, has taken up a position in the TOC. Um, we'd like to nominate uh, Jing uh, to take the um, to take the co-chair position that that Aaron has has. Uh, has vacated. Um, Jing has been um, a member of the CNCF storage SIG for, for a long time, one of the original members, in fact, and, and was um, also co-author of the white paper. Um, and, and I'm sure a lot of you also know her from the Kubernetes uh, storage SIG, where she's a co-chair there, um, and, and you know various other uh, open source projects. Um, so we would would very much like to nominate. Uh, we would very very much like to nominate uh, Ning for the Jing for the co-chair and put that for for a vote. Um, and I'd also like to nominate uh, Nick Connolly, um, who has been working with the the SIG for a while and has been uh, helping us build the the performance um, white paper and. and uh, contributing um, his his uh, sort of many years of vast experience uh, and, and in depth experience in this space um, to the performance white paper. So, so we'd like to have him as a tech lead nominee as well. Um, I'll follow up after this um, with an email to the TOC mailing list um, and uh, to 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 make the vote official. Any questions on this? Great. Well done finding some candidates. <laughs> Indeed, we're, 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 uh, we're very happy actually. Um, so we talked, we already talked about the tech leads and, and Aaron Boyd um, stepping down uh, to whilst on the TOC. Um, I wanted to give a quick update on the, the projects that are going through the review process. Um, the, the Longhorn project, um, we're kicking off the DD process um, with SAD um, following the feedback we had from the TOC. We're going to make sure that we um, provide additional information during that DD process on sort of the differentiation between Longhorn and some of the other projects. Um, Chabo FS, which is um, a distributed file system that's also going through um, the incubation process, the project um, presented uh, to the SIG. Um, we think the project is um, is suitable for uh, um, moving to incubation from Sandbox. Um, but before we make a formal recommendation, we're going to be nominating a tech lead to um, to review uh, the. The, the project and, and do sort of a trial install and trial deployment um, to to make sure we have all of the relevant information to submit for the for the recommendation. Um, Open EBS, uh, we've had some updates from um, from the project team. We're going to make we're going to have a final meeting with the team, which we're which we're about to schedule, um, and. And then um, we'll provide a, a final uh, recommendation from the SIG to the to the TOC um, to 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 cover off sort of any outstanding issues or or or, or any concerns that we might have. Um, and then we have ongoing work um, on two documents that we're building. One is um, a disaster recovery document. Um, which still needs some work, but but hopefully we'll have. Um, uh, but the, but we have a, a draft open for comments. Um, 
and hopefully we'll we'll get some additional feedback before KubeCon and the performance and benchmarking white paper is also open for comments. There's some final cleanup to be done, but we hope to to finalize before um, before KubeCon um, as well. Um, and there was a there was a note on the TOC mailing list about uh, the TOC had some follow up questions about um, about the Vineyard project that had a sandbox submission. I'm not sure what the questions were, but if um, if uh, if you have any if the TOC has any questions and would like to follow up, um, we're we're obviously happy to to try and help in any way possible cover of the information we had from the from this um, project presentation. I think that covers everything. My recollection and uh, somebody jump in if I'm recalling this incorrectly, my recollection is that on Vineyard, we were really just wondering if um, CNCF is the most appropriate. It's, it's the one that has quite a lot to do with um, uh, like machine learning data manipulation, I think, isn't it? Is that the one? It's yeah. It, it well, it 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 provides um, an in memory, um, I guess, an in memory object store for um, sort of. It, it can be used for analytics purposes, but also for you know long, um, long data pipelines where where you know data has to be written and read on multiple nodes um, simultaneously. So it kind of does this in memory sharding um, as a as a to be able to handle those those data workloads at speed. Um, so there is a very strong storage following um, uh, and it can be used for lots of other things other than analytics, but obviously analytics is a very strong use case. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things on there around like PyTorch distributed training. And yeah, they, they yeah. They have yeah. done. They have done a quite uh, an amount of work to to integrate into into those tool sets too. Yeah, I mean, it certainly looks like an interesting project. So I, I think I'll, I'll the, you know there, there'll be more detail in the recording. But my my recollection is that we weren't concerned that it was. Yeah, you know, we thought it was a great project. We just wanted to make sure that the CNCF would be the home that would give it the best support. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, any questions for storage or any other SIG related things? Okay, um, I had a quick, any other business? Um, we discussed, I think back in February, the idea of adding a requirement to, um, for incubation and graduation projects to have some form of documented security processes. We don't wanna say what, they have to be we just want to say they should have processes for people to report security issues and for addressing security issues within a project um, i'm just flagging it up in case there are any last minute comments because i would really quite like to get my small uh pr merged if we can and i'll send a link into the chat because many of you probably can't click on that so uh, that's in the chat so yeah basically last call for comments on that pull request uh anyone have anything else they would like to bring up today <laughs> paris saying everyone is great very true here here <laughs> Okay, I think with that, we have 10 minutes to chill out or do something exciting, step outside if the weather is nice where you are, have a, have a little break, and uh, I will see you next time. Super, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.